Hello and welcome. You're watching South Africa Tonight on ENCA. I'm Anli Hatton. Let's jump into our top story straight away. Uh, the latest crime stats suggest South Africa is a crime scene. Over 6,000 people have been murdered and more than 13,000 sexual offences recorded in the first quarter of the year. Police Minister Beke Kele released the crime stats earlier today. Our senior reporter Aviwe Mtila has been covering this story. Aviwe, over 6,000 thousand people murdered that's horrific but break down the numbers for us it's harrowing really the crime stats that we heard today of course covering the period between january and march just to hear the increase of 22.2 percent uh, of murders but more alarmingly is a 37 0.2 percent increase in the murders of children that would paint the picture of the society that you really live in and the minister Begitela painting out that uh, the last number of months have been really marred by violent crime that includes murder gbv and just crime uh, in general he was there of course uh, detailing uh, the last quarter of the 2021 2022 financial uh, year which of course details uh, the stats between january and march let's take a listen to what he's had to say around the murders in, in the country a total of 2,268 people were murdered in public places such as in open fields, streets, parking areas, and abandoned buildings. The second most likely place for murder to occur is at the home of the victim or of the perpetrator. 1,350 people were killed in that environment. Liquor outlets and public transport such as buses, taxis, or trains were the third and fourth most likely places to be killed in South Africa. Overall, crimes committed against a person also known as conduct crime increased by 15%. Have you, where sexual offences also continue to be a major problem. Once again, women and children bearing the brunt of those crimes. Tell us about the stats. Another alarming set of numbers there, Anna uh, You'd hear over 10,000 rapes that happened uh, just in that period, and the majority of them happening at their homes with people that they know. In fact, I got to pose a question around, of course, we've seen many protests. I myself was in Mtata just a week ago covering uh, the Justice for Nam Sham Twa protest, a lady that was murdered back on the 20th. 1st of April. I asked the minister, do we have any feedback or interventions? Because we're hearing these harrowing numbers, but we were told that uh, they still, of course, conducting investigations. So nearly two months later, but it details how the police have become ineffective in grappling with these scourges of gender-based violence. And something that the minister actually touched on while he mentioned that um, he doesn't know what to do. He seeked questions from even the provincial commissioners, and there are no answers to the high levels of crime that we're grappling with. In fact, let's take a listen to Minister Peggy Taylor. All sexual offences recorded a 13.7% increase with contact sexual offences recorded the only decrease in this crime category. The first three months of this year, 10,818 people were raped in South Africa. Almost half of these cases a staggering 4,653 rapes took place at the home of the rape victim or the home of the rapist, mostly by a person known to the victim. Public parks, beaches, streets, open fields, parking areas, and abandoned buildings were the second most likely places to, to rapes to occur. Lika was involved in 1,290 of the rapes. The Eastern Cape Lusigisigi Police Station, Inanda's station in KZN, and the Delft Police Station in Western Cape recorded the highest incidence of rape for quarter. Aviwe, when we look at these stats, firstly, we've got to be cognizant of the fact that it's not just numbers. These are real people's lives. So, so to look at them with respect um, in light of the lives that have been altered forever, based on these crimes. But when we're making comparisons, we also have to look at the context. And we're looking at these stats compared to last year when we were still under some level of COVID-19 lockdowns. Did the minister talk about that comparison? 
Yes, we have to put it in perspective and understand that even in the third quarter of the financial year 2021-2022, we were under lockdown level three, which had different restrictions from the current levels of lockdown that we're at level one. And you'd understand that with the more people that are open and with the loosening of the restrictions, of course, uh, we are bound to face more spates of crime as the, even the, the looser restrictions around alcohol and the selling of alcohol, um, you're bound to see more levels of crime but still harrowing figures nonetheless and the minister admitting that it's quite harrowing, something that they need to grapple with. Hearing that out of the 30 um, high-level police stations, uh, 14 of them fall under Gauteng, eight in the Western Cape and um, the Eastern Cape holding the highest per capita murder rate. Of course, serious interventions are required if these numbers are going to change, if they're going to get any better. Did the minister allude to any of these interventions being implemented soon? Well, they're saying that it's something that they're actually working on. Uh, the minister did indicate, in fact, even in the numerous visits, I remember when we were in Tata ourselves, saying that they now targeting police stations individually, especially the high level of crime police stations, as you'd hear the two police stations in Mtata, the uh, central police station as well as the Madeira police station, quite problematic in the top 30. So they're now going, um, bringing in interventions. I understand there's 100 million rand uh, that is set aside just for those 30 police stations just to get them to be more effective, as we understand. Lusikisiki, once again, in the Eastern Cape, in the spotlight for being the number one police station when it comes to the high level of crimes. So it's really targeting these police stations and making sure that there's change on the ground from these police stations. Very quickly, before I let you go, Aviwe, uh, we also know that the minister is looking at training and capacitating over 10,000 new officers to add resources, human resources. But we've also recently seen uh, fraudulent uh, applications for training colleges at the SAPS. Did that come under the spotlight today? It's the capacity issue because I was asking the minister, really it's harrowing stats. Is he failing? Is he admitting as a minister of police that he's failing uh, in his job or what, what are the real issues that uh, seems not to have the grip, the, the, the grip on crime? He mentioned the capacity issue mentioning that back in 2010 I remember there were around nearly 200,000 police officers on the ground. I think 196,000 uh, if my memory serves me well. Um, and the, the the population at that time was around 50 million. Now the population has increased to more than 60 million, yet uh, the boots on the ground of police officers have actually dwindled. I think they're at around 175,000. So he's saying that there's a huge capacity issue. And of course, visible policing ensures um, a better crime levels that are contained. As you'd see, if you're seeing more police on the ground, there are less chances of anyone committing crime. So he did mention the capacity issue that needs to be tackled with urgency. Absolutely. Thank you very much uh, for that, Avi, where these crime stats hinting uh, that not only are there serious issues that the police force needs to grapple with, but we also have serious socioeconomic issues that inform uh, these crime stats.